What's going on, everybody? Hope you're all having a great Friday. Uh, had a good little Thursday myself. Came in second in the Monster. Was pretty frustrated. A uh, little bit of an example of uh, maybe like a little fl fancy play syndrome. I, I think that I a little bit overthought it for a 200-person tournament, and I, I switched from Bradley Zimmer to Daniel Johnson to try and get even lower ownership than I had. Um, I thought Owen Miller would be low owned. I didn't realize he was going to be like 2% owned. And uh, if I if I keep Zimmer in there, I win, you know, an extra 20K there. Uh, if I enter that lineup and do a few other things, I, I you know, had it in the $4, but I didn't have it in everything else. Ended up second. Anyway, a little frustrating, but overall, really good night. I had a really good night on DraftKings also. I just didn't, you know, didn't uh, didn't win anything, but I, I more than doubled all my money over there. So it was a great night for me. Ready to get after it again. Sheets, how was it for you? And uh, I, I would like to I would like to tout ourselves, by the way. Um, so just to review yesterday without looking at the slate beforehand, uh, talking about it, we both came up with both Cleveland and Texas as our two best teams. And uh, they went they went off. Uh, we also uh, identified St. Louis and Boston. And uh, we also identified the fact that J.D. Martinez can't hit anymore. Um, yeah. And uh, so we were on some good stuff uh, as you were there, as you, if you, for those of you that were in the live stream, you know that although I had a bunch of ownership elsewhere, I did uh, 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 go down the, the big lineup. I had Patrick Corbin who was out in like five seconds. Um, but aside from the big one, the big one, I almost, almost got it all back in the other stuff. Um, so that was, it was okay. It was great from a content uh, perspective. I didn't execute quite as well as Bobby did on my, in my bigger ones. And I'm um, ready to, uh, to move along. Me too. Um, all right, let's get into it, man. Um, yeah, just a reminder, guys, all my plays and everything that we're doing and all the sheets of sheets and everything at truedfs.com. And remember, you can sign up for a month free if you join now. Also, I'll put a link to the Discord in, on the video so uh, you guys can jump on in there as well. We've got a pretty good, lively group. Uh, all right, sheets. Except, except, except I'm having trouble finding the spot to share my screen. Um, okay, well, well, we'll get there. Um, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, literally, I'm, I, have, I have Zoom up here, and then I just don't know where the thing is. Let's see. Oh, oh there it is. Sorry. Uh, it, it did move. No, no, no. I got it. I no, got they it. changed it, though. There it is. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, let's start about, let's talk about Arizona, St. Louis. Um, so, the, so, by the way, that overall, one thing about the slate uh, overview is something that we haven't had to worry about for a while, which we definitely have to worry about tonight, and that's going to be weather. Yep. Um, okay. Especially uh, some of the best plays in the slate uh, have had some of the more significant weather concerns. So that's uh, something that we're all going to have to keep an eye on. Yeah, well, we'll go over that stuff later. I mean, as of right now, it's really, really hard to know what to yeah. what to think of the games at this early in the morning yeah. um okay. good all right so st louis and um boy so st louis and pittsburgh uh i did not get to much of this at all actually that's not true um the way i my, my stacks are set up right now on DraftKings, i have three three more three kind of primaries and then i have a whole bunch of kind of secondaries and st louis i do have is one of my six secondary stacks so uh, I, I certainly have some interest in that and I, I have some I have a couple of lineups with Jay happen on from on FanDuel some for some reason so I, I gotta I gotta take a look at it I don't really have Jay Happ as listed as one of my top pitches I basically have four pitchers that kind of you know dominate my 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 ownerships but um Jay Happ I, I do at least have a note to take another look at yeah I mean so you could call it half being rejuvenated or the fact that he's faced this Pirates team in every matchup. Uh, he certainly looked good in those matchups. Uh, I'm not going to play him tonight at 8,000, but I understand it. Uh, it's, it, you know, he's literally faced Pittsburgh two out of the last three times he's gone out there and I, it has been good. Um, don't really know what else to say. He, I don't, I still am not entirely sold on him being back back. Um, and I wouldn't mind, you know, if you want to take, if we had, if we had the same prices as we used to, uh, some of these guys against him, um, maybe if Alfred was in there earlier in the order, you could, you could consider doing that at 2.2K. I, I don't mind Pittsburgh. Uh, it's not my favorite, but I do. I, I certainly, I don't know. I, 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 I feel blah about both of these teams for the size of the slate, but I think they're both would be in play on a smaller slate for me. Um, I'm okay also taking best from St. Louis. I just don't feel like I want to prioritize it. Okay, you ready to get after yeah. Arizona Philly? Um, I am going to play uh, 
I, I don't like that Alfonso Marquez is going to be behind the plate, but I am going to play Aaron Nola. He's the number one pitcher to me on the slate, and it's going to be hard to – it's hard for me not to have him in half my lineups. I feel similar to how I felt about Scherzer last night. Um, I feel very strongly about Aaron Nola today. Uh, anything from the hitting side? Love Philly. Uh, assuming this, this is going to be a weather game too, so we have to worry about Nola for that. Um, I love Philly. I don't think that people are playing them nearly enough, and they are one of my favorite stacks on the board. They, they're high, one of my highest priorities, uh, somewhere in the top four for me. I don't know exactly where I have them, uh, namely Bryce Harper, Didi Gregorius, especially on the lefties, Brad Miller, uh, Odubel Herrera, and then Rio Muto and Segura to, to round it out. Even Torres, I don't mind. And I don't think I would use Jankowski because I don't think I need to go that low for a guy without power. But I can, I'm open to it in a five minute. So all of those guys are in play, all one through seven. I, I like Philly a lot. So I'll go backwards. I'll start with the hitting. Um, I agree with you. I, I have Philly as one of my top four stacks as well. Um, and I think these same guys, I, uh, if, if you didn't mention these guys, uh, Harper, Real Muto, Segura, Miller, and Gregorius. Um, and with respect to the pitching, this is where, where I'm at. And, and first of all, obviously, what Bobby said, you know, uh, watch the weather here. And, you know, we'll be – I don't know if I'm going to be on live, but, um, uh, but just make sure that you <laughs> – make sure this game is going to go off before you, before you play it. Um, I like Nola, I, I, but I can get away from him. That, that, um, uh, that, that's my um, – What's your argument for it? No, just, just for other – no, 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 just, yeah. just for other options. That's all. Yeah, no, I was just when we talked. I, about I, I have no argument against Nola at all. <laughs> no, no, I asked you because you talked about leaving money on the table. I heard a lot of other people like about leaving money on the table, but they were also people who weren't playing Scherzer yesterday or Sale. And I just don't understand when you've got better pitchers, why why not play them? Um, I understand that there are other options, but I just that that you know it's a different tonight. Um, last night I didn't really. I was I'm just sort of like you know taking what we were talking about last night and trying to figure it out because I, I do think Nola does seem like the best pitcher on the slate. Uh, but you know, let's maybe, maybe you've got somebody. Well, let me, well, let me, let's, let's just talk about it. But do you think he's, he's that much better than Cole? I think it's close, but I think Nola's, I mean, he's pitching well, against a minor league team. So I'm going to give, I give him the edge. I mean, it's, it's the best possible, basically the, it, not necessarily strikeout wise, but he doesn't need it. Cause he'll get strikeouts anyway. Basically the best possible strikeout matchup against the worst team with almost like a feeling like you get a guaranteed win behind your back. Cause you're to face Arizona's Widener and the bullpen. I, I, you know, I feel like he's, he's got a huge floor here, in my opinion, um, with a monster ceiling. But, but no, I, I guess it's a good – I mean, but I, I have no problem just playing the two of them. I, I, it's at that point, again, on DraftKings where I'm, I'm looking through the plays and there's so much value, man. There's so much oh, you can, you can and you can get to both of them? I mean, that's the same thing yesterday. It was, I, I literally had to talk myself out of it because I was worried about sale, and he kind of showed a little lie later in the game. Um, after an incredible start, but I, I was like, it was just too easy to play Cole and Scherzer yesterday. And I felt Sale. Sale, today. Uh, yeah, Sale. Sale and Scherzer. Yeah. Um, and I feel that way a little bit today about Cole. And that's what, you know, maybe is a weird segue into our next game, which is going to be a weather game. And look, Tampa is one of the top teams I have on my, all my stacks. Also uh, Tampa Philly would be definitely two of the top five, but I am worried about this game. And at the same time, I love, the idea of playing McClanahan instead of these guys. I don't like it. And I, look, Baltimore doesn't strike out nearly as much against lefties, although he struck out eight of them in five innings last time out. Um, it, it actually, in fact, his last two starts against them, he struck out 16 over 12 innings. I, I'm very open to this McClanahan as a pivot off of the other guys just for searching for the strikeouts, just for hunting for Ks. So he's going to be completely unknown because of the other two stud pitchers. I obviously don't have him as high as the other two but I do think he makes for an awesome tournament play. Um, any, uh, and where does Tampa rank for you as far as hitting? Top five. I, I, I don't want to say the exact number yet because it's hard, to, hard for me to figure at the moment, but I have them up there right there, right there with, every, with Philly, with the Dodgers, with the White Sox, Toronto. There's a lot of good stacks today. But they're right, right, now, right, right now I have Tampa rank, rank number one. Um, uh, I obviously I'm not going to get to McClanahan based on, you know, my numbers, because like you said, I mean, he's just extremely pricey and right. You know, whatever, but, but that's why he's going to be 2% owned. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so um, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be playing enough lineups to get to that, uh, but, um, 
I certainly get it. The uh, and, and I'm not getting to much. I'm not getting to any of the uh, actually, that's not true. I, I am getting to Baltimore uh, as I always do <laughs> in kind of like my secondary uh, options. Uh, they're not a top option by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, they're certainly a secondary option for me. Um, and yeah, so if this game goes, uh, Tampa will be, you know, they, I have them as my number one team and, uh, look for a little bit, a little bit of Baltimore also. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I definitely have no interest in a Baltimore stack, but uh, I mean, there's a, a couple of value guys. It's, it's a really terrible match. I mean, it's not like, you know, it would be, I think it's, it's getting to be, Hey, these guys have, have done well for us. So let's play them rather than if they're really viable. I think Santander's viable. I think Austin Hayes, because of his price, you could make an argument for and maybe Urias, not together probably. Um, I just don't see the reason to play any of this value against the third best pitcher, possibly the second best pitcher on the slate. Hey, as long as hey, if you want to play uh, Nolan Cole, I mean, as long as you have other other better value. Um, oh, there's there's I mean, as there is every day, there is an incredible amount of value for hitters that I like. And she did, I know it's been a weird like run lately, but because what's happening is like Every day, it's the seven, eight, nine hitters from all the, the stat teams that are stacked that are doing the damage. Every day, it's all the cheap guys who go crazy. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. it feels like we're getting this every single day. You know, Santander a couple nights ago, and then also, t- I mean, every cheap outfielder hit a home run a couple nights ago. Because I'll, t- I'll tell you, and I'm just I'm not to be difficult, but, I, but I, I, yeah. I am not seeing as much uh, good good value today as, as I have been. Um, okay. That's fair. I mean, the guys that I have are guys that you don't want to play. I don't think. I mean, the guys I like my top value is like Victor Robles. Um, <laughs> you're right. Then, you're right. That I don't want to play Victor Robles. <laughs> right. And then we'll get to a couple of other guys. One guy I really do like. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to some of these guys later. I think. Yeah. Well, okay. So, so speaking of that, I mean, I, I don't love this next game, but I have absolutely no problem with, a, you know, a hot Tyler Naquin at 2,700. I don't care so much that, if you're gonna if you're gonna be that cheap and he's in Miami, it's not it's not a desired thing, but I, I certainly I certainly uh, I think I you know prefer the Naquin and pretending depending on where Aquino hits, um, I think I would prefer those guys. It, it, even Farmer at 3K is not a bad one off at short. It's just not a great stadium to hit in, but it doesn't mean these guys can't put up a number with their price and, and can't can't hit one out. Uh, so I think all those three guys are in play in the Cincinnati game. And I am right now not playing Wade Miley. I may change my tune on that uh, a little later, but I also am probably not playing Zach Thompson. And at some point this kid is going to burn me and put up like 30 fantasy points out of nowhere. Um, I believe in his talent. I, I think the Reds are really tough and I don't like to stack take pictures against them. Yeah, I, I, that's the thing. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not screwing with the Reds. Um, yeah. Uh, and I don't, uh, I don't really have much in this game, honestly, uh, no hitting, no, no, no pitching. So we can just move. Okay. Um, let's move it along. And, uh, yeah, I mean, look, I said, I, before I say, I, I won't play Victor Robles. He is batting lead off. If you want to get a little mini stack in of Washington, the, better, like you mentioned all the time about New York, it's hot and humid this time of year, obviously. It's hot um, and humid today. <laughs> and, and, and maybe there's something to that, um, to, to, to that play. Uh, personally, I have a pretty bizarre amount of interest in Rich Hill. Um, I, I think that th- we've seen this Washington team look really, really bad. And Rick Hill, Rich Hill is an all over the map guy. We don't know what to get. Really we haven't seen a real number from him in a while, sort of off and on with injuries. Um, actually pitched really well against the Dodgers last time, last time out. I don't, uh, I, I mean, like the strikeouts weren't there. It was against the Dodgers. I'm willing to overlook it. I think there's a there's a weird path for him to get over 20 here, and he's one of the weird cheap options that I like. So, I'm not talking about going crazy, but somewhere between 10 and 20k. That's right, 10 and 20 percent. And I and he's got a he's got a 4k prop that which which I'm going to put as one of my my bets of the day, um, as a as a plus on that 4k. So I actually like Rich Hill a little bit. But I, yeah, I could certainly see the argument for the other side with Washington. It's kind of weird to see a pitcher in a, in a matchup where the team only has a 3.7 run total. He's 6,800 and has a history of putting up 30s and no one really wants to play him. And I kind of, I mean, I get it. Um, I, I do think the Washington's, you know, both sides of this game are interesting, but I, I will definitely heavily be on the Mets side. Uh, they are one of my favorites for value and, and not quite the full bottom of the value, but just lower tier. Michael Conforto, um, 
is way too cheap. And I guess that's really the only value that I love, but uh, Chan Cisco, you're going to get, you know, minimum cost of catcher. So if you wanted to make a stack, you can go ahead and do it. I don't think I'm going that far with it, but I do love Conforto's price. I do love, uh, you know, Cisco's a minimum cost option at, at catcher and their lineup is getting back to healthy. So I don't, I don't have a problem if you want to, if someone wants to stack this, I just like other stacks a little bit better. I definitely have no problem with, with the Rich Hill play. Um, I have him alongside of another, you know, high, kind of like high 6K guy, very similar. Guys that maybe you can play, but maybe you don't need to. Um, that's, the, that's the way I look at the Rich Hill play. Yeah. Um, and um, with respect, I mean, look, I mean, Washington stinks. <laughs> uh, so I have no problem with that also. Um, uh, we, I was able to get the home run out of uh, the good game out of Soto yesterday in the wrong lineup. Um, I don't really have too much interest in the Mets. So for me, it's just kind of like Rich Hill where I, where I need it. And I still haven't decided where I need it yet. Um, but I definitely have him in, in the, in the, in the cheap OSP2 mix for sure. Yeah. Same page here. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, everybody in that game, it, the Mets are going to be really unowned. And again, it's a good spot, just, just worth considering, but there's also a lot of, a lot of guys to like on the slate. Um, all right, Cleveland and Boston. Why don't you start us off on this one and let me know if, what your level of interest is in Eduardo Rodriguez. Not much. Um, I, I, I have no, not much interest in this whole game. I, mean, I, I, I thought that I would have more interest in, um, in this game and in the – and I, I thought I'd have more interest in Boston, and I don't. I thought I'd have more interest in Erod, and I don't. So, I mean, I have Erod listed as like my – I don't know, sixth, seventh pitcher or something like that. Um, so I, I, I'm kind of off of this game. Yeah. Um, I, 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 feel, I felt off of it until I realized that no one's going to play anybody from Boston today, <laughs> um, which just feels like it might be a mistake for us not to, to, to get a little bit of action. Uh, because, they, because they're 50% every night, now they're going to be like 0% owned. They're gonna be, <laughs> when, right. when they're outside of Boston, they don't, they, they, their ownership goes way down. And, and yeah. you know, often for good reason, but it's pretty you know pretty good hitting weather in Cleveland. I don't know if you just saw a couple of those home runs. They look like high yeah. five balls that just sort of crept their way out of there. Um, I, I have some interest in Erod. I'm debating what to do with him. I don't have an answer yet. Uh, I will. Uh, I would say that on the other side, I will absolutely go back to my Cleveland guys. And I mean, you've got. I don't know that you want Zimmer necessarily in a lefty-lefty matchup outside of a stack, but somewhere between Zimmer, Yu Chang, Owen Miller, Wilson Ramos, Miles Straw, Oscar Mercado, probably being one of the ones I like a little better. These guys are are free. They're completely free. And Erod, even though I, you know, I think he's a decent pitcher, he's not a guy who goes out there and locks people down very often. They still have a 4.25 run total. Um, I, I think there's a chance here that Cleveland could get to him. So I'm sort of, I have a little bit of interest here in, uh, in some of these, uh, these Cleveland cheap, cheap bats. I just don't know how to prioritize them, but I just have Cleveland value as part of the value that I was talking about. I mean, those guys are literally free. Okay. Uh... Yeah, I actually have guys from other teams rated better than those guys. But yeah, but, but Mercado at 2K is, uh, yeah, stands out for sure. Mercado and then I think Miles Straw as well, too. Um, all right, uh, let's talk about Toronto and Detroit. Um, I'm not going to play Steven Matz. I think it's very strange that he's going to have zero ownership in the same exact matchup where he just had 35% ownership. <laughs> um I don't think he's a terrible play altogether. It was weird because we, with Detroit, we saw, we saw them strike out a ton against Ryu and, and, uh, and Robbie Ray. And then they had this game against Mats where they, where they had to strike out one time in six innings. And it's like, he pitched well, you know what I mean? It's like he pitched poorly, but you, you need strikeouts if you want to win here. He's got a five and a half K prop. He's 8.2. I think that game was a little bit more of an aberration than, than the norm. He's, he's in play. I just don't love him. And I think the run total for – I understand that Toronto has been struggling. They finally got a little bit of it together yesterday. I think Toronto is in a great explosion spot here, and I love Toronto. And speaking of guys that are cheap, Corey Dickerson is one of my favorite values on the slate. Um, so I do have Toronto as a priority. I think their run total is too high. I actually kind of like the over in general in this game. Um, but, yeah, that's where I'm at. Toronto I have in my top five as well. 
Yeah, I have Toronto in my top uh, top three or four. Um, again, I have four that kind of stand out of the others. I uh, actually, before I forget, I, I did actually went past Washington a little bit too quickly. Uh, I, I do have I doing Washington is not the worst play in the world. Also, mm -hmm. um, so anyway, back to this game, uh, Toronto. Um, yeah, I have them as a top four option on uh, on both sides actually, and uh, the usual suspects. Well, let's see, Vlad, Semyon. Dickerson, I have Tioscar, uh, and Bichette. So the usual suspects. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess this answers the question, by the way, of why do you need to uh, play guys like Rich Hill or you know, or pay down? Is 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 so you could do this, right? If you want to do this, um, like like Simeon, Guerrero, Bichette, Hernandez, and then Dickerson obviously makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, I think I brushed off your playing. You're paying down too much because. While there is value, I don't think it's not quite the exact spots we've had them in. So, I, so maybe I maybe I brushed you aside a little too fast. That sorry about that. Um, um, I think you're right. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so I didn't get to Matt's. I didn't get to Manning. Uh, it's for me. It's Toronto or, uh, and I, I I'm gonna I, I'm gonna make sure to have to have some of that. All right. Um, yeah, I think the Toronto just it feels good. I I, I don't have. By the way, I want to just point out Detroit has a history literally for like the last 10 years as being one of these teams that can't hit during the, the just doesn't hit in general, but then they hit like crazy during the day for some reason, whenever they have a day game and it happens. And so when it, Detroit's games against Toronto, I think we're all day games last week and they actually were, you know, kind of, they didn't put up like monster numbers, but I just wanted to point that out. It's something I've sort of noticed about Detroit. And it's definitely been true recently. So I, uh, I don't play Detroit hitters uh, on night games very much. And then during day games, because they get a little bit of that extra heat, I always uh, find myself getting some Cabrera, but uh, I'm not getting any Detroit. Today. The one Detroit guy that stands out for me is Derek Hill on the outfield of 2,500 among the 700 million yep. sub 3K outfielders out there. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's a good call. Um, all right, San Francisco, Atlanta. This is a tough game, and I can't decide what to do, which means I'm likely to do nothing. Um, I think both these pitchers are really good. I don't think this is a ma good matchup for either of them. Uh, I think Freed has always got the, he can go through seven innings like nothing, but yeah. the, are the strikeouts going to be there against the San Francisco team that doesn't strike out that much against lefties? Ah, I don't know if I love it. So I'm probably going to lay in. And I love Gaussman. I, I think that he's another awesome pivot, it, just a worse matchup. That's why I was finding myself with the McClanahan over him. Um, I just can't get I, I, I he's on my list I'll, I'll make a Gaussman lineup because I think he's got upside but I just want to I mean most of this guy's damage has been done and he's done it against some good teams don't get me wrong he had to face the Dodgers he had to face you know play pitch in Colorado and all that but if you look at his game logs his bad starts are those starts against the Dodgers against Houston when he gets Arizona and Colorado at home in San Francisco he kind of is, has cooked there he's had one good game against the Dodgers but I don't know. I'm sort of iffy on this. I, I believe in the talent. I just feel like I don't want to pick on Atlanta and I'm probably not going to do it. He's just not going to outscore Nola. Um, th that's just my, 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 my quick, my quick thing. And yeah, I, I agree with ev absolutely everything you say. I think Gaussman is, 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 is a good, is, you know, has a lot of upside this year, just kind of like a, a, a bad to middling matchup at best. And there are just better options, I think. So I, I'm, I'm off of that. And Max Freed, same thing. Like, um, look, either of these guys could end up really could end up being the top pitcher. I mean, it is possible. Sure. Um, I just, I just don't think it's 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 particularly likely. Um, and I'm not getting, but they're certainly both good enough where I'm not going to mess with the hitting on either side. How good is Freed? Last time out to throw the the Greg Maddox. He got the Greg Maddox uh, com uh, shut, complete game shutout. The nine innings, that, less than hundred pitches. Pretty yeah. incredible stuff. This guy. <laughs> He's just so efficient. Sure. And that was in Baltimore, um, getting to face the American League teams. All right. Um, all right. You ready to talk about Houston and Texas? Yeah, I like both sides of this Houston game. Uh, side. Yeah. I, I like Oda Rizzi at 6,700. Um, you know, uh, we were talking about the other 6,800 guy, uh, Rich Hill. And, yeah. and, you know, this is the other guy I was, I was referring to. I think he's, he's perfectly, perfectly good 6,700 pitcher. If you want to get up to say Toronto or pay up for Boston, like you wanted, you were talking about earlier, or, or paying up for something else. I mean, I, I think he's totally legitimate. Every once in a while, he throws throws a good game, and Texas every once in a while puts out a bad game, and they 
scored a bunch of runs yesterday, so I have no problem attacking him today. Uh, and I like Houston as, as a secondary stack on, on, on that side of it as well. So um, I do have interest in both uh, both parts of the Houston side. And scheme. Yeah, um, I, I get it. I, I was very – like, but last night I made my lineups. I was very in Dota Rizzi as a play. Looking at a 30-plus percent owned guy who's got a four-and-a-half K prop feels weird. Um, and I think one great thing you can do in this game is you can play Jason Martin. You can play DJ Peters, you can play Adeles Garcia, you can play Nathaniel Lowe, and you won't have to spend hardly anything. I think Texas is an awesome secondary stack, mostly like two and three men to get for value. But I think uh, Texas value is is still there. And, you know, we're, o- o- Rizzi's only pitched well once in his last nine starts, and that was against Seattle last time. Now, Texas, you could argue, sort of a similar type of situation. But there, this guy gives up hard contact still. And he, I mean, we've seen him get just completely lit up at times. He gives up a ton of power. He gives up stolen bases. These guys can do all of these things. Yeah. Um, so Adolis Garcia drove me nuts in the ser- last series. Uh, but Adolis Garcia, DJ Peters, uh, Jason Martin, who just hit a home run in his last at bat um, a couple of days ago. You could even mix in Yoni Hernandez uh, and, and then Nate Lowe. I think they're all really, really good plays. Um, and I don't think you necessarily need to fully stack them. I just think it'd be like a two or a three man that I definitely have some interest in. No, uh, moving on. Nothing, actually, you know, you, 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 you kind of like put this in my head when you're like, oh, you have the White Sox coming later. And I, I didn't quite get to that. So uh, get, get, I didn't really get to anything here. I got no Cubs. I got no pitching. I got no White Sox. I got no nothing. So, so talk, talk me into, uh, I, I guess you don't need to talk me into much of anything. If, if the Cubs are throwing a pitcher I've never heard of and the White Sox are, are, are batting against them. Um, so uh, talk to me about this game a little bit because I didn't really get to it. Yeah, I think, the, I think the White Sox are right, right near the top for me as well. They're probably number four. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Uh, I think that, so the you have to look at the way teams are playing right now. The Cubs just got lit up at home a bunch of times by the Rockies like who can't hit on the road, who are the worst team in baseball away from course. They are just in a different zone right now. I think we need to use it by taking pitchers against them in general. I think we need to use it by trying to stack against them because you are not seeing major league quality arms. And it usually takes these hitters about one at bat to figure that stuff out. So I am very, very high on them. Uh, Moncada being my favorite, which I never get to say. I love Andrew Vaughn's price. He's another one of the great value plays of the slate um at 2700 regardless of where he's hitting to be honest with you brian goodwin is 2400 on FanDuel, and he I found myself in my natural first build caesar hernandez 3500 and then you could play the expensive great guys in robert um robert robert however what people want to say it anderson abreu Jimenez. i will have exposure to all parts of this stack i'm trying to pick on teams the same way i'm trying to pick on arizona this time of year and i wanted to play philly that's sort of how I feel about the white, the Cubs right now. Now I know they might put their best foot forward because it is, that's the one thing I'm a little bit, you know, re- re- uh, wary of is because they're playing their, their, you know, crosstown rivals and all that. Um, that maybe, maybe they do put every best player they have in there. I don't know though, man. I, I'm, I'm definitely interested in the White Sox here. And I think that you're going to get a little ownership in a couple places, but overall, I, I don't think it'll be owned nearly enough. And I also, I think that Dallas Keuchel is a legitimate pivot off of Votorizzi. Like, if everybody's worried about strikeouts, like, they, these guys are supposed to t- have the same amount of strikeouts today, and we've seen the Cubs, like, strike out nine times against guys who don't even have strikeout ability this recently. So I, I can get behind, like, a little bit of this Keuchel as a pivot off of Votorizzi, just a direct 1v1 pivot. I don't love, this doesn't feel great on a huge slate, but I'm betting against just on how bad they've been at the same time. You do have some really cheap bats and good spots in the order between Hermosia, Schwindel, um, Bodie. They're not quite as cheap as they were. And then I think wisdom as a one-off, if you want to spend up or as a part of maybe the five man to complete your stack. I think that there's some argument there. Um, I I just don't think I'm going to fully stack them. I just think that all those guys are a little bit cheap still, and you have a low strikeout pitcher and uh, there's certainly enough upside at their prices. Um, and by the way, this kid for Chicago, I don't really know what to think about Keegan Thompson. Like, I, I know that there was hype around him at different points. He hasn't really made the start. It doesn't look like he's stretched out. I don't, I don't see it personally yet. Um, 
I, I'm just going to be on the White Sox tonight. Simple as that. Um, okay. Uh, moving on to Milwaukee, Minnesota. Before I do that, I, it's just really interesting. You know, when you when you do um, when you get involved in DFS and, and high, higher level analytics, you, you you sometimes lose track of what teams are good and what wins and stuff like this. You also you know, makes you think about this, the types of statistics that you used to be interested in, you know, like batting averages and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what I was doing, but I was, I was looking at the leaders and, and if I, you know, for those of you that want to, that want a trivia question, okay. Without cheating, if you could tell me in the national league, there's like a two way tie in pitchers for the most wins and it's 14. If any of you could actually come up with even one of them before, you know, without without looking, it'd be like amazing. Kyle One Hendricks. of them Kyle is, Hendricks. is Kyle Hendricks. Right? I know this stuff. Um, Kyle Hendricks is is yeah, he's fourteen and five. Um, he's a good pitcher though. It's not that crazy to me. But but um, the other one, it must have just happened in the last couple of days because it was only Hendricks for a while, so it would have had to happen in the last couple of days. There was a few guys at thirteen, including Bueller. Um, I don't. I can't say off the top of my head who the four other fourteen is. Right it, now. it was Arias, actually. Oh, Arias. Okay, yeah. Oh, he, he was. You know why he came back from the the brief injury list? So I, I didn't even think about. It. And that was last yeah. night, wasn't it? That was last night. Yep. Oh, uh, was it last night? No, it was a couple of days. Ago. No, two days ago. Sorry. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Arias, and and then. No, we think we team like the Cubs are basically tanking, you know, and then the guy has <laughs> got fourteen. Well, but early in the season they were still kind of competitive, but yeah, I hear I hear your point. All right, so Milwaukee, Minnesota. I, I don't know about you. I, I I got I have Milwaukee as like a top stack. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. So I, I'm I'm not by myself in that. Um, I have them as the top two actually. Uh, well, I mean, it depends on how much you want to spend, but um, I, I I I like them a lot. Um, and that's pretty much all I have to say about this game. Actually, I don't like Lauer. I don't like Albers. And if you if you need me to identify who the the, the, the guys from Milwaukee are, um, those would be um, the usual suspects. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think they're fine overall. I don't oh, wait, Lorenzo them. Kane. He was that value guy that I was, I was mentioning. I was thinking about earlier. So, yeah. So, Kane, Garcia, Wong, Adames, if he plays, and, and Yellow. Yeah, I, they're fine. Um, I don't like them quite. I, I, like, I like the National League team going to the American League against a team in Minnesota that's you know, kind of quit a little bit. Um, their bullpen has been lousy, so I can get behind it. I have no problem with that. Personally, I think the real plays in this game though, are like Josh Donaldson is, is criminally underpriced um, at 3,700 and he's cheap on FanDuel as well. Uh, I think Brent Rooker is another one of the cheap value options we've got available to us tonight. Yeah, I did have, but before I, yeah, I did have Minnesota, by the way, as, as, sec, as one of those five secondary teams. Yeah. So, yeah, so go ahead, go for it. So, it's one of those spots where I kind of see what you're saying, and they have the better matchup. Mitch Garver, another one. Um, I, I just don't personally think that I want to play this Milwaukee as my main stack on this slate. Colton Wong, even when, even when the highlighted guys, when I look at other people talking about them, there are guys like in Garcia who, yes, he's had a little bit of power this year. Uh, Lorenzo Kane has no power. Urias, no power. Uh, maybe someday Urias will. Um, I, I mean, we just haven't seen it. Uh, we did have the one, two home run game in the windy Wrigley, Wrigley game. Okay, he's got, he's got a little bit enough power. And then Colton Wong. Like, do we really want to hitch our wagons to this, like, on this slate? I don't know. For me, that's where I'm at. All I will say is that, you know, if you, if you, if you put those five guys I mentioned in, um, and then you could play Cole and, and Nola with just incredible amounts of room. Which guys? The, the but the oh. stock, but Milwaukee is not. I don't even think they're like a better value. I mean, like, because if you play a five man stack, you better be playing Yelich and Adams. Well, I have them. I have Yelich, Adams, Wong, or Garcia, and Kane, and I put Cole and, and no Cole well, and Nola. Just, I guess I guess the real point is that just makes it show you how easy it is to get Cole and Nola in because those guys right. aren't especially cheap. Okay, you know. Right. So I don't know. That, that, that's, that's something to think about, though. Okay. I, I, if they beat me, they, they might just beat me tonight. I, I, I like them fine. I don't think I like them as much as I do the other stacks we've talked about. Um, okay. So so for me, obviously, this next game, and this, this, this is the natural, I don't even say pivot, because I, I presume he's going to be owned too, is, is pivot off of Cole and, and, and Noah would be Musgrove. I mean, like, you know, he's. Uh, he might be more owned than they are. 
it's possible, right? I don't know. I mean, the the angels are are can be pretty bad sometimes. Yep. Um. So yeah. So Musgrove is one of my top guys. That's for sure. I mean, there's for me. There's Nola, Cole, Musgrove. You know, three of them. Um. And yeah. And I, I got I got no problem with that. Uh. In addition to that, I have San Diego more on, but on FanDuel. Uh. But but I do have some San Diego as uh, as as a stack option as well. Uh, where, where do you think Musgrove rates for you in the in the scheme of things? You like have any ancient San Diego is hitting anything? Top, top, top four for Musgrove. San Diego is right there with the White Sox for me in that tier. The, the White Sox and Phillies, and I and I I'm open to having a few more stacks today because I think we might lose some games like the Tampa game and things like that. But I think San Diego, like, don't buy all the early projections because we don't have a hundred for we don't have a line because we're not sure how the Angels are going to pitch this game. <clears throat> you're going to want to play a lot of the uh, San Diego in this game. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. Um, for one thing, not only is that price right on, I mean, they have guys who are mixed in who help uh, keep their price down with, I mean, if you want to play Kim Profar or Mariznick at the bottom of the order and Aaron Nola, who should be batting around fifth or sixth tonight, who's a, probably the number one catching up option on the slate. Um, Austin Nolan. Austin Nola, excuse me. Um, but Tommy Pham, Machado, Tatis, I, I love those guys, and I will be heavily invested uh, in San Diego. Even if that heavily invested is only 15% or whatever, it's, it's a big slate. I, I have a lot of these stacks really, really close, and San Diego's right there. I just need to know a little more what the what the Angels are doing before I can fully commit to, to how much I want them. The Angels have lately, by the way, even though they've struggled, they have been, they put up a ton. I mean, they've struggled as a team. They put up a ton of runs a bunch of times and they've given up a ton of runs a bunch of times to some bad teams. If, if the wheels come off like that against the San Diego team, you might see like a five or six home run game out of them. And for San Diego, they get to play in the American league and uh, add the DH. So even more reason to like them. Um, and just to kind of and throw in the, throw in my, throw in whatever my, my, the team that I have, kind of like the best overall considering again this is like early morning ownership right but ownership possible upside price and all that is, is for me actually san diego so that's uh that like is what that. it is again it's not very you know again i'm just still working on this these numbers and stuff but uh but it is san diego so i'll just throw that out there um yeah uh you ready to move yeah, I'm ready to move to a game where I like both pitchers. Um, I'm very high on Manaya today, and I think that he will be the the low owned guy. I end up doing something with it. That by the end of the day, my guess isn't that low owned. He's 8400. He has a six and a half K prop. These Yankees, even though they hit the ball sometimes, they strike out so much. Uh, Manaya struggled his last couple times out. I actually really like this uh, matchup for him. He put up 27 the last time against the Yankees. Struck out 11 and five and a third. The strikeout matchup is really really good. Um, so I will, I will be into both these pitchers. Uh, Manaya is probably the fifth guy on my list, maybe sixth. Um, Musgrove, who you mentioned before was fourth Cole and Nola are one and two. Yep. Uh, I have, uh, Cole, um, as what well, again, but uh, I just tell you the way my numbers are, are, are playing out. It's like, it's kind of bunch between the top four for me. Um, um, uh, so I do have Cole up there. Um, and and Manaya is always the guy that that I don't play when he smashes. So uh, he's definitely going to be the low owned guy tonight. Um, yep. and, and exactly what you said. You know the Yankees are are loaded, but you know they 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 they, they can free swing. You know, and, and um, because they're loaded, and uh, there's certainly a lot a lot of strikeouts out there. So um, I'm actually very much surprised that the projections, usually the early projections love everybody against the Yankees these days. I'm really surprised that Manaya. Look, it's so the, funny that I didn't even notice that. Maybe you're right about that. I got to check that. He should be more owned than he is. And he should have been talked about and people will talk about him. This is a great, I mean, he's the cheapest guy with a, a six and a half K prop. And he's, he has the same K prop as, uh, as Musgrove. And if you tell me they're going to throw the number, same number of strikeouts, I'll take the discount and I'll take the low ownership and, um, there's obviously upside on those six and a half. He struck them out 11 times last time they faced each other. So and not only that, I, I want to look into if I could, if I could track that, like, like how own guys are against certain teams. You know what I mean? Um, not guys are like, but you said, oh, I'm surprised that 
that Manaya doesn't project better because they've been they've been over not over projecting but they've been fully projecting guys against the Yankees. I, I wonder if I can do some work on that. All right, um, ready to any hitting? I have no hitting. This game. No, not for me. All the Yankees, as usual, are always excellent one offs against anybody. <laughs> Spe- by the way, speaking of um, of uh, of of situations where pitchers kind of show up against against teams for just some reason. Remember yesterday, I was like all into Kikuchi and um, happened to be against Kansas City. Yeah, he had a decent enough game. And yeah. and, and, and tonight, uh, similarly, uh, like Logan Logan, uh, Logan Gilbert shows up for me as a, one of my top four. You're, you're skipping. You're skipping the Dodgers. I had them last on my list. That's weird. On DraftKings, I'm just going along the. That's weird. They must they changed something then. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. So okay. I'll switch. Yeah. Okay. So Gilbert, Gilbert, yeah, go ahead, Gilbert. So, so, so I have Gilbert as like one of my top four. I've, uh, and, and you know, obviously my top SP two, and uh, and and you know, it's interesting because based on what you just said, you you said that you know that the pitchers have been projecting. You know, they're giving a high projection against the Yankees. I, I guess it's the same thing as going on for some reason against Kansas City. If back to back days, I, I'm getting Kikuchi as a top play yesterday, and I'm getting Gilbert as a top play today. Um, that. Actually, that, that's a little lack of respect. You know, like you were saying, I mean, Kansas City's, uh, they're not the worst. I was in the fifth inning before Kikuchi had a strikeout yesterday. I, I wouldn't, yeah. like, feel good about taking a lefty against Kansas City after that. Yeah. Um, but know. Gilbert's a lot more talented of a pitcher than – well, no, okay, Kikuchi's really good, but Gilbert is on the way to, to start him, I think. Yeah. So so I, so I like him, um, and I, why why do I not – I'm going to ask you rhetorically, and then, then I'm going to finish finish this. Why do I not like you, bitch? I probably should. Yep, um, yep. And uh, that's pretty. Uh, that, I guess that's the rhetorical question I have for you for the rest of this for that game. Yeah, B- Bubich coming off his best start, put up 30 in his last game against uh, the Cubs. So again, it is the Cubs, but it's Seattle. We've seen Seattle yeah. struggle with lefties and righties. Bubich mm-hmm. has got good stuff. So both of these pitchers are on the. All right, if I want to get creative with a spend down, these are the guys I look at. Gilbert certainly being the one that makes more sense in general, but Bubich uh, will be lower owned, is cheaper, all that stuff. If you didn't like any of that, is is this? Uh, you start it off, and then I'll go. Yeah, I again, it's just I say this every single time. I, like I, I don't have the Dodgers projected as particularly good, and as a result, they're going to be zero owned. Um, I imagine. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know what to do. I, I'm probably not going to play him. Uh, you going to play him? Of course. Like, I, okay. I, I can't even like, you know, I am, if you would have said to enemy early in the season that Kyle, I know Kyle Freeland's been good. Okay. Like he's had, he's had a, a rejuve, rejuvenation after being arguably the worst pitcher in all of baseball. <laughs> so, so it didn't take much to rejuvenate him, but I mean, he's been really good. Like he's had some really good outings. He also has missed a couple of what was supposed to be starts. So I'm kind of confused at what they're doing with him. And they also, they pinch run him sometimes. So it always throws up the, this throws out the numbers, but he's been good. I'll, I'll give him credit. I am not going to bet this lasts forever. I am going to be on the Dodgers tonight. They're in must win mode or they're, you know, they're, this is the, this is the real stretch run. They need to win the division, um, which is crazy to think. Cause they, they basically haven't, they basically never lose anymore and they still are not quite there. Um, I think that it's not as desirable of a stack because you get Pujols in there, but he is another one of the cheap options you can include in your stacks. And he's like the only cheap Dodger. So uh, it's probably going to happen more for me on FanDuel just based on the way that their lineup is constructed. But I, I love Pollock. I love, I, I love Turner and uh, Betts coming back. I love Betts. And then you mix in the Seager, Muncie, however they want to do it. Muncie might be out tonight. So maybe you play uh, maybe Taylor or Smith. Smith's better against righties. If Muncie's in the lineup, I'll like the lineup a lot better. It's hard because we probably won't know until after lock, but um, I don't think we have official word yet on what's going to happen with him. There's, there's, you know, I know he's, he's considered day to day at the moment. They haven't put him on the IL yet. Um, anyway, I, I, I do like the Dodgers. They are probably just in the San Diego range for me. I don't know that they're my favorite. I need to have all of them. Uh, th- that's all going to depend. I might change my mind if, if Tampa Bay and Philly get some rain issues. But I, I really do like the Dodgers tonight. And I think bets as a, if you're going to just take a one-off bets, Pollock, um, 
Justin Turner are all very, very viable. And then you can include Seager in your stacks and you will get no ownership on these guys. And I like that. So I also should put out that I mentioned that Colorado is the worst team in baseball against right-handed pitching away from home. They are facing a guy in Mitch White who put up 30 fantasy points in his last outing against Pittsburgh, but this is the Rockies, you know. I had Jackson pitching. Okay. If, okay, Mitch White is who I've got. As of right now, that's part of the problem with Mitch White. I don't know how they'll do it, that they use an opener or whatever. It's going to depend. They've done both okay. with him before. Um, if we just got the, the clear he's going to be going, I would have. I would probably have a tiny bit of interest in no ownership because I think there's upside against the Rockies. Okay. But they're going to put their best foot forward. If he gets into any kind of trouble, he's not going to have any real leash tonight. Um, so I, I probably won't use him. But it's, it's weird to have no interest in a cheap pitcher who's get, facing the team with the lowest run total on the slate. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, if he is, in fact, pitching. But I, I do like the Dodgers. Want to right. do a quick sum up? I'll do, I'll do a rundown, then a quick, uh, quick PSA. Um, I'm going to be putting out videos on a lot of different stuff coming up the, this weekend. Uh, we can do some, a NASCAR, maybe a League of Legends, maybe a soccer. Um, uh, we'll definitely be content with soccer. Chan will be putting up soccer. I'll, I got my MMA thing coming up uh, a little later today. And uh, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty big weekend. Um, How do you so like my golf play by pick, for pick it this week, by the way? So far, he's What's looking that? pretty good. I buy my my uh, my Rory to win the tournament. Yes, he's looking he's looking excellent. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. Um, you. so we got a, uh, and I've been I also been putting up the the, the golf showdown slates uh, each day. Uh, whatever I have time for, I'll put up. Um, so I like uh, Nola Cole, Gilbert and Musgrove, and I actually don't have much of a difference between all four of them. They're they're pretty close for me. Uh, as far as stacks go, I like uh, Tampa, Milwaukee, Toronto, and Philly. And secondaries are Houston, Baltimore, Minnesota, St. Louis, Washington. Uh, anything different on FanDuel? Not that much, actually, um, except San Diego shows up in FanDuel. And then, again, my, my sneaky leverage stack on both sides is San Diego. So I guess San Diego would be my, uh, my, my overall, overall top team, I guess. I have it no, Nola Cole in order. Nola Cole uh... – and then I, I think it's a really I, – I think Musgrove might be a little bit of the dangerous chalk that we might not need to eat. But I do think okay. that he's I – do, I do like him too. There's always upside with him. But I like Manaya. <laughs> um, I sort of talked myself into it, but I really do. And I also like Oda Rizzi and, and Erod with some mixed sins and some large field for Bubich and uh, Rich Hill um, as well as Gilbert. Those are my, my guys. My stacks in order the way I have them right now. I do have Tampa Bay – and Philly sort of like one in one a um, with Toronto right there as well. But Toronto, I'm probably, I, I'm, <laughs> they, they've been burning me pretty badly. <laughs> um, I like good PTSD just talking about them. Um, and then I have the Padres, White Sox and Dodgers in a similar tier, but I, I do think Tampa Bay Philly weather is going to dictate what I do. Cause if I get nervous enough to come up one of those games, it's the only way I'd get another stack, but, but those are mostly going to be Toronto, Dodgers, White Sox, San Diego. I get the Milwaukee argument. I get the St. Louis argument. I just don't think that's what I'm going to end up doing. I actually did check my schedule. I am going to be available for, uh, for live tonight. Wonderful. Um, so I will see you then. Excellent. Excellent. Good luck, everybody. Later. I'll see you later on now, Bobby. See you, man.